it was fantastic. We did it in Nogales, Arizona. And, you know, it was really the first independent film musical really made. I mean, because MGM had done all the wonderful musicals before that, you know. And uh, I was really, I was a very young girl right out of high school. And it was very exciting to be cast in it with Gordon McRae and Gene Nelson and wonderful cast of people, Rod Steiger, you know, it was very exciting. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. That's a pretty one. Love so tell us about Oklahoma tonight. Well, I mean, Oklahoma is a great choice for a, an opening night film. We got a restoration here nearly 60 years after it's released. Um, you know, there's something, Oklahoma works great on your couch, but Oklahoma works a little better in the Chinese theater with a thousand other people who are desperate to sing along, you know. Uh, so it's that's an experience, you know. I was talking to Leonard Maltin earlier, and we're talking about all these reasons why this movie's good and why the fact, and you forget, like, wait a minute, it's fun. Like, Oklahoma's fun. It's uplifting. It's joyous. And when you're joyous and uplifted, you want to do that around a bunch of other people. So tell us, are you going to jump out of the airplane? No, my kids wouldn't let me. <laughs> they said, Ma, are you crazy? <laughs> I turned 80 last week, so they said, this is silly, you know. Well, thank you so much, and have a great night. Thank you. creative blending of the art just makes it an ageless film. So it's important to all Americans and around the world, people know this movie. But I think in Oklahoma it has special meaning due to the timing. The movie came out in 55, the original play on Broadway was 43, and it's based on a play that deals with a more positive image of Oklahoma. It's the cowboys against the farmers, it's this love triangle, it's about hope and innocence and youth and the future and coming together in two worlds and this is positive image and it came out just as Oklahomans were embarrassed by the image of Oklahoma that came out in John Steinbeck's book, The Grapes of Wrath and then in John Ford's movie, The Grapes of Wrath. Two different works of art and two beautiful works of art but people took it as actual history, as if it was a documentary. And it cast Oklahoma as a dry, dirty place where people were being shoved off the farms by the villainous bankers and had to flee. And the crudity, the earthy nature of the book and the film, it embarrassed Oklahomans. In coming out of the Dust Bowl, the Great Depression, Oklahoma lost population from 1930 to 1950. And we lost more people in the 1940s than we lost in the 1930s, when you would think all these people were leaving. So here you get two decades of Oklahomans taking it on the chin in terms of internal image and external image. The stage play just revolutionized the entertainment world because it's the first Broadway show where the songs were a part of the story. Generally, you're doing something and you stop and you sing a song, then you continue the play. Oklahoma changed that. Rodgers and Hammerstein changed that and wrote the song as doing part of the telling the story about Oklahoma becoming a, a state, brand new state, brand new state. And then the movie uh, just gave it even more a worldwide distribution. You had to go to Broadway, basically, or catch it you know, on a road show to see Oklahoma, but the movie went worldwide. And uh, it's just revolutionized the image of Oklahoma as one of excitement, not one of dust bowl. And here comes this new movie showing Oklahoma as this bright, sunny frontier with a cowboy strolling down on his horse, singing in just happiness and optimism and a new nature to the film. Well, it resonated with people in Oklahoma. Remember when you spelled the name of the movie, the name of the play? It's O-K-L-A-H-O-M-A exclamation point. And it isn't Oklahoma, it's Oklahoma. And it's exciting. 